Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's episode is another wooden model, but this time it's the Wood Trick Locomotive R17. It's a different brand from the other brands that I've used before, but it's still the same concept of putting it together. So it was very enjoyable, just like the other ones, but it still had some different concepts and uh, some little differences from the other sets. But I hope you enjoy it. And as always, please like and subscribe, and I'll get more content out to you. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are getting started on another wood model. This is a Wood Trick brand locomotive, R17. So this is another company I haven't uh, bought anything from or any type of model from this company. Um, but from what I've seen, it looks like, you know, it's the same as the other two brands, the U-Gears and the Rocker. Um, but there are a little bit of differences. So um, kind of like the train looked pretty cool and it actually comes with a track that, uh, you know, it'll run on. So, I figured I'd just give it a shot and see uh, see how this uh, how this company makes its models and everything. So, um, and as you can see, or one difference I notice is the uh, the boards that the pieces come on are actually horizontal, or the other two brands were vertical. But uh, uh, they are numbered, and same as the last ones. You know, each piece is numbered. That you can, you know, find it from the instructions and everything. Uh, but this one, I mean, it's a big model, so it's uh, it's got like eight boards of pieces. And then uh, this little smaller one, I think it's extra spare parts. And each model uh, does that. Each company, they'll throw in some extra pieces just in case if something breaks, whatever. Uh, not of every piece, but just some of the smaller ones and everything. Um, but, uh, but so far, I mean, it looks just like the other models, um, and, uh, in this one, we're actually going to be dealing with something that I haven't shown you yet in any of the other two models that I've put out is, uh, this one, uh, actually has toothpicks, so they give you a whole ton of toothpicks use and then there's like a, li a little small little glue stick and then uh, sandpaper and then they give you three sizes of rubber bands to use and then uh, with this one the uh, little uh, instruction book with all the symbols and everything to tell you you know if you see the symbol in the instruction guide it tells you what what you're supposed to do this is actually separate from the actual manual just so I guess you can have it out while you're looking through the book so you don't have to flip all the way to the front or the back or anything like that. And then another thing that's different with the manual is it's not uh, vertical as well. This is horizontal too. So instead of it, you know, the other models, the books were this way, where this one, it's, it's long ways and you flip it up. But, and as you can see, it gives you the, the boards that you're going to be pulling the pieces off of and then it tells you which number you know that you need to pull and uh, I mean the pictures are really nice they're uh, really big and a little bit of color kind of shows you the, the new part that you're going to be putting on everything and then here you can see you know we're going to be using toothpicks and it's telling you to you know cut them from both sides you know once you combine uh, you know the two pieces together that's why they give you so many toothpicks because you end up may end up uh, using a lot of them and cutting a lot off that you're not going to be using later. So, but uh, but this is something a little different, you know. I mean, the not too many st steps on each page, but it's definitely uh, detailed and uh, shows you what you're supposed to be doing. And uh, once we get to some specific parts that I may not have shown before. I'll definitely talk about it when we get there, uh, but I'll be doing the same thing with this one as I have before. Is 
uh, you know, punching out the parts and if they need any wax or anything like that, then, uh, you know, I'll go ahead and do that as well. And uh, if you want to see how I do any of that, uh, uh, please look at my other videos that I have out and everything and uh, it'll show you how to do it and I may uh, just put in a little bit in here just to just to show you again how I do everything but uh, uh, but now that's a little different I mean it's each company has their own little different ways that they present everything to you with the manuals and uh, but you know the one constant is all the pieces are on wooden boards that you punch out um, you know along with the guide and everything and and then they all provide you the toothpicks and rubber bands, pretty much everything that you're going to need to to put it together, and all that. But as always, I'll you know have my own little tools, some little pliers, my own uh, beeswax, you know that uh, I use a lot, and uh, actually kept one of the uh, the smaller waxes that came in the other one just for getting into small places, whatever. So it's always good to keep uh, those pieces from old models because you just never know if you're going to need it uh, later on but so but here's all the boards we're going to be using too so it's it may actually be a pretty big model uh, to put to put together so I'm um, kind of looking forward to it I hope everyone enjoys it um, kind of looking forward to this so uh, we'll get started I haven't really noticed anything too different with this set compared to the other ones. I mean, the woods may be a little different, but I haven't really noticed too much. You can kind of tell a difference sometimes when you break the pieces off the boards and, um, you know, when you're sanding it and everything. So, but, uh, and how the pieces fit with each other. Chart straight. And go to the next one. So I think this is going to be the. Oh, got to make sure I'm facing the right way here. This is the uh, going to be the engine of the train, so... There we go. Match the one we already have on there. So push that one in. sure the axles are the same there's a little area that's angled up right here so you want to make sure that matches all right the way the toothpicks work is uh, usually I want you to you know there's certain holes that the toothpick it'll fit in there but the, it'll, it'll be really tight and uh, that you can just kind of push your way you know use your fingers kind of sometimes 
uh, to get it to go through, but it, it, it hurts your fingers a lot by doing that. Uh, but sometimes I like to go ahead and just line up the pieces, how they're going to be uh, in there, and then go ahead and stick it through. But then I get a small pair of pliers and You don't have to have it go all the way through. You're just trying to get it to where the end piece is flush that you'll be cutting off. But you also want to make sure that the thicker part of the toothpick is is uh, all the way through. Oh, there we go. Okay, so so I finally got it through. So you can see it's a pain in the butt. But so now what you want to do before you cut anything off. You want to go ahead and just line up the other holes and then stick the through, toothpicks through and just repeat the, the process. And again, you could use your fingers, but it wears your fingers out really well. So, so you just. <sighs> and like I said, you don't have to go all the way through as much as I did on this one. You're just uh, looking to get it. You're just looking to get it part of the way through because you're going to be cutting the, the ends off. And since the toothpicks come in different sizes and, and thicknesses and everything, so that's why sometimes it's it's uh, some toothpicks may go in a little easier than others. Because all you're trying to do is just connect the two pieces. Put that one through. And then try not to stab yourself like I just did. Okay. So now you got all the toothpicks in there. And it's telling you to pretty much cut it off on both sides. So what I use is just a smaller pair of snippers and uh, what you want to do is just use the, the flush part against the piece and you want to put your finger against the edge because if you don't it's going to fly and you just snap it off. And if you don't want to use your fingers you can always uh, use something else to To push against it so your finger doesn't get too smashed but then it'll it'll be somewhat level so you may uh, if you want you can come through with a you know some sandpaper and just you know sand sand it down a little bit more just so they're flush you know it isn't gonna hurt nothing if it isn't and then then you want to do the same thing for the other side and since these are a little longer then you can just kind of hold on to the pieces as you're cutting them and then you can, you will eventually may end up using, reusing these toothpicks by uh, putting in the other side. And you just want to try to get a straight cut as much as you can. Okay, and then, yeah, if it doesn't look too great, eh, so be it. I mean, it's. You know, as I said before, you can't get it perfect. But you know, if you want to sand it, it'll be a little bit smoother. You just gotta watch to make sure you're not uh, sanding off any of the other uh, lines or anything that is showing on the, the piece that you just have. But again, nobody's really gonna notice too much. But so there you go. That's connecting how you connect the pieces with the with the toothpicks. And now, with it, the piece straight up. Oh, 
Oh, you're gonna connect it right here. Okay, I just wanna make sure it's level, straight, make sure it's on there good. All right, there you go. Okay, so we got uh, all the pieces up for the next step. For this one, it wanted you to get a toothpick and with this, most of them, they'll give you uh, other little pieces to help you with measuring things or cutting things off or whatever. And uh, this one, it actually gives you this little tool that uh, once you put the toothpick, toothpick in, then uh, they want you to cut it off right where these lines are right here, which I already did, that I'll be using later. So, but this will come up in a few other spots and everything. But uh, most of them have little tools like that to kind of help you uh, measure, cut things, whatever. So, so we shall press on. Get everything straight. And then that one like that. And make sure they're lined up with these holes here. So you can push them right in. Okay, so now with this, now we're going to use the toothpick. This one's actually loose enough to get through now. Pushing through the hole, it kind of doesn't go straight to where you need it, so you may have to get it to right where the hole is and then kind of do a two-fold thing here to push up and then uh, push in to get in the hole. And then what it wants you to do is use this other tool where the number one and two is. It wants you to make sure that the toothpick isn't sticking out more than the length of that distance right here. So you get up to it, if it's flush and it's right there, then you're good to go. Because that's what they want. And then, turn this around. And that goes in there, and now we're gonna on on top of it just so it doesn't go anywhere it spins freely and they wanted me to put wax on the on the end of the toothpick just because it's if it's gonna be spinning in here you want it to spin freely and I put wax on the one gear Okay. 
left-hand side. And then... Oh, it's because it goes... It goes all the way down to that. And then... Had to cut the toothpick like we did before. So now we're gonna let's see if this is gonna go all the way through and it's a little slicker. So, so I'm using the pliers to get it through and it actually lined up with the hole pretty well. So now using the thing. And it looks like it just needs to go in just a little bit more. Not too much more. And that looks good right there. So now... From the bottom, <laughs> coming up, there's a little hole that slides into. First, and then have that slide into the hole, and then this over top of it. And these are uh, little U shaped pieces, are just to hold the gears in, hold the toothpicks. Because uh, underneath each, each one, there's a little hole for the toothpick to go in, so. So, just turn it just to make sure it's turning really well. So, we'll just press on. one that we've done so far. Okay, so now we're doing a toothpick again for the axle, as I'm guessing. Just, uh, looks like it's lining up good with the hole. Yep. But this time we're using the uh, each edge has a number on it. So those are gears one and two, which we already did. Now we're on gear three. So the three and four, we're gonna be using this one. So now this is Sure, it's all good to go. Get all the wax on it. I'm trying to. Okay. Here we go. Once we get all the main parts on and everything, then work out pretty good. That to that to that. So the trick is to. The holes to line up, at least for one. And then use the pliers. 
is just to push it through. Another way to do it would be to just work one at a time. And once you get it all the way through, then you can really don't have to push anymore because you can just cut the ends off on both sides. So now, and of course, always make sure to hold on to the toothpick when you cut it because if you don't, it will go flying. Trust me on that one. And you may not, you may or not, may not find out where it ends up. Okay. So now, line it up with that. Get that one in there. We're good to go. And then we're just make sure they're all lined up. And there we go. Okay. Now these will go into here. All the way in. There we go. Okay. And now we're using our toothpick to go through the hole. There we go. Alright. So now we're using this medium rubber band that we're putting over here on this side. And this one is gonna go inside. Whoops. Yeah. Oh, there we go. And again, just testing it to make sure everything's rolling pretty good. And we'll eventually use that rubber band later on, but for right now we're just just making sure it's all working smoothly. So with this one, I went ahead and put the toothpick in. It was the exact same process that we used for this one, just different pieces and everything. So I didn't didn't think I needed to show that again. So, but I just went ahead and just put it together. So now it's through the bottom bunch of these together so I'm just gonna go ahead and put these on oh. line them up through the bottom and then I am going to just there we go through a little bit more just to tighten it up and another one of these through getting their precise measurement there we go perfect just because it's you know the axle you want to make sure all the gears are lining up and everything Okay, so now, using the rubber band, There we go. 
Okay. Ugh, that was a pain. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> nice. You can see everything turn. Hmm. Interesting. So, there we go. Simple, but it is not. Get all the pieces to line up. There we I think that one's on. Okay. Yeah, we'll know once we get uh, everything going, but just turning the gears just to make sure it's all working. It's all lining up. And then on the back. I <laughs> got it. Now oh, we got it. And now we got it. Whew. Thought I was doing something wrong. All right. And with that, let's just check it again. Making sure it's all working. Ooh. So I've already kind of uh, called for some toothpicks to go through here, so because we're eventually going to be using all these pieces to put on here. So, so now what it's calling for is getting a small rubber band. Looping that in there, locking it in. And I'm just going to go ahead and head on there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put this on here. And I put it on the wrong way. And then use this and it into this one just kind of pulling it tight enough to get it into the groove there okay and then there we go it's a bit easier to put that in first all right so I've got that in there use the smaller pieces but they give us so many toothpicks that you really don't need to worry about trying to reuse smaller 
the smaller pieces that are in there. So and then again, you can always go back and sand these down a little bit if you want them to be smooth and everything. So, uh, but that looks like that's it for for this stuff. So. spot and then what it wants us to do is use the uh, toothpicks to kind of seal it off and I'm just using the older ones that we've used before and just grab and hold and just pushing them down It's pretty much locked in. It ain't gonna go anywhere. So. Okay. So 
these is just putting the wheels on. Just keeping it level for now. All right, so now we got this. part I don't know how this is gonna work but so pretty much got all the rubber bands they want you to have eight of these on one side of the key here so you got eight on this side And then you're gonna have eight over here on this side. And then what you're gonna do is you are going to grab every single one of them. So pretty much pull this tight. I'm just grabbing all of them right now. Mm, there we go. Just trying to push the key in all the way. And this kind of locks all the rubber bands together. through here. Okay, so I finally, finally got it on. I had to have some help because um, you really need about three hands to do this. One to hold this, one to pull the rubber bands, and you need somebody else to to put in this little key right here for the rubber bands to 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 sit on, and it'll push it all the way in. And then you, I just rolled it out to get all the rubber bands on. But but this is what it looks like. So this is what you're going to use to to turn to uh, get your motion going everything wind it all the way up and get it real tight and then it's gonna let loose on this end and everything because you can kind of see it kinda, once you get loose and so you can see it's uh, spinning and everything so this is where you're gonna get all that motion going and everything so whew. but yeah three hands that's what you need so Whew. Okay, so now now these go right here. Ah, so the gear's kind of touching right there. Everything. So now I need just gonna slide this in. But now it's locked in, so. Yeah, see? So you can see it spinning with the rubber bands affecting everything else. So. So we'll just leave it at that. Hmm. 
Okay. Set that aside. And then. Okay, so with this. Okay, so got the new uh, stick in, got the door on, there's a little emblem right here to put on, so got to use the toothpicks for that. You can see the door opens and closes, everything, so now... you wind everything up this is going to be to let it go to get it moving and everything so all right yep so one door on it's getting there okay got the next pieces out for the other door I already uh, just attached this with the toothpicks just to save a little bit of time no different than what we've done in the past so Same thing with this. Just this looks okay. That's the top. Yep. So. curvature when you're putting it on. And then I got the roof on. Starting to starting to look like a train. The first one. And then this goes up. And the top one. Here. 
Just looks to be the same. Clap on the thing. So, not too bad. All right, we're just moving on in our steps. So, appreciate you watching. See you next episode. already did a couple or one step one was to put all these rings together and uh, use toothpicks to kind of put them together so I didn't really want to film that that wasn't uh, you've kind of seen me put toothpicks in before but it's just lining the rings up and just putting toothpicks all the way through and cutting them off so that was pretty much it with that one and with these the size it was just two pieces put together with toothpicks so I just went ahead and did just completed that step as well just to save a little bit on time so now looks like we are getting there. Looking pretty good. And then pushing this to 
hope that is in the middle. as far as it's going to go. It's working their way into it. There we go. Oh, okay. Whew. Whoops. Oh, that took a little bit. I definitely wish. to make sure it's moving moving smoothly. Locked in, it may uh, be a little bit better. Just trying to. Back right there. Yeah. I'll get it to work and we'll see what's going on with it. But, this is the dream part. 
so not looking too bad. So, hi everybody. Uh, before we begin our next steps, just wanted to let you know that everything's working fine. What I figured out was the toothpicks that you put into the wheels to connect these two wheels together. If you don't have them completely flush with the wheel, then when it goes around, the bar here will catch on it. And that's what it was doing. Like right there, the bar is really close to the wheel. So if you don't have these sanded down or cut right flush with the wheel, then it's gonna catch on it. And that's what was happening. It was catching on all the, the toothpicks that were sticking out. Cause I thought I had them flush, but there was some of them that, uh, that weren't happening. So just make sure on the front, on the front and the back that they're just completely as flush as you can get them. Just sand them all the way down, whatever, but, um, but it's working fine now. So it's not uh, catching or anything. <sighs> all right, everyone got uh, pieces out for the next step. I went ahead and did this other one. It was just putting this little break on. It locks this in place just to uh, keep it there so it doesn't move, but it was just putting these two downs putting these two uh, tabs in with a toothpick, so I just went ahead and did it. So it wasn't taking nothing. So we're just gonna go ahead and put the wheels on. So we're on our next step and kind of went ahead and put this together. It was just individual pieces. You just had to match the hole to the to the piece to the top and the bottom. Just went ahead and kind of put it together as the front grill of the train, but I can at least go ahead and show putting it onto the front here. Just making sure I'm doing it right. Oh, here we go. Whew. Here we go. So this is going to be the bottom of the top that we just built and everything. So. Okay. So you want that on the inside. So it goes in here and then Okay, looks like the next step is to 
merge our two pieces together so this should be interesting as these two are going to be going down in here and i gotta get these little pegs into the right here now okay so it looks like these go in here Pegs go in the holes right here. Oh, wow. <laughs> that went in way too easy, but I'll take it. And then down here, we've got two sets of pegs that are going in here. Just makes it hard to. Okay, I think that's it. Let's see. There we go. <sighs> oh, and then the gears lock into the one mechanism down at the bottom here. So, so. Seems to be working all right, so. It's better to uh, use pliers or something that you can get a handle on. Push it down.
There we go. Okay, that one's there. And this goes here. Okay, and then on first because it's a uh part so not too bad didn't take too long but I use about half the sheets so next thing would be to build the, the uh, passenger car some pliers to push these through because they definitely wear on your fingers if you try to push them through on your own. where I can and then just use an exacto here to clean it up. There we go. Okay and then we're going to be pushing some toothpicks up through here. Here. 
go. We gotta make sure you're uh, pushing in straight, not at an angle. Let me tear up the wood a little bit. All right. And this is probably gonna be underneath carriage or something. And this is part, uh, it's gonna be the, where we're gonna be putting the wheels on and everything. Okay, got all the next pieces. I went ahead and just put these together. As before, it's just putting these together with some toothpicks, so that took a while, so I'll just save some time. So, now we're gonna be putting on just like this, and then And putting that on. I'm guessing there's going to be something else afterwards, but for now. Just be throwing these on. Definitely gonna have some pieces falling off and everything until you get it all lined up. Just trying to get this top part on right here. The these bottom ones are just going in the holes. They're not really too tight or anything. So I'm just making sure the wheels are not too not too tight or anything. got the next pieces out um, kind of went ahead and did this part it was the bottom of the of the cab and you had to put toothpicks down to connect the railing this is gonna be the front the front and the back of the of the car of the passenger car and uh, you had to stick toothpicks down each one so I didn't want to film that because it actually took a little bit because uh, they actually had to be a certain uh, distance uh, using this, you had to go and measure to make sure they lined up all the way down. So the way I did that was I just started at the end. I uh, put a toothpick down this first because it's just easier to go down through this uh, down into here. Uh, and I used this to kind of put in in the middle of it, and then use this to push the toothpick down until it got down to here. And then once it got down to here, then I grabbed the toothpick from here and pushed it down enough to where it was flush, or to where it was enough uh, below it that I could cut it off and everything. And then, uh, and once that was, once I was done with that one, then I left it and then I went to the back and did the same thing for the back one. And then I just picked uh, some spots in the middle and then kind of in, uh, in kind of a different lengths. And then once I did that, then just kind of started in the back and just with the next one and just did the same thing over and over until I got them all through. But I was using this in in between to use it as a spacer. So uh, it kind of used as a uh, the pressure. So this wouldn't, this top rail wouldn't go down or, or anything like that. So I just, 
I just did each one until I got them all done and then just did the same for the other side so uh, but didn't film it and then uh, just sanded the bottom and the top just to make it smooth uh, just to make the rail so that was about the easiest way I figured how to how to do that since it was so many different toothpicks and everything so but now it looks like we're gonna be connecting uh, the car the wheels to the bottom here so and these tabs will go into these right here just push it in from both sides just to make sure it's in all the way and there we go just the wheels there we go the wheels and the bottom of the passenger car together so now we're just going to be working on the the sides the seats and everything else in the middle so these were the next builds uh, it's like the little connector pieces for the cars so i went ahead and just kind of put them together um it's kind of straightforward just sliding the pieces down individually and then just putting a toothpick straight down into it and then uh just putting these sliding these pieces on had to do it twice so and then now we are going to connect it to the car you just got to make sure you're lining it up to the right holes make sure they're fitting good hard to grasp it on the back there we go so we got that one on there okay so now what it wants me to do is the rubber band is tie get the small rubber band so yeah, just like that so it's attached to the car and then like I did before try to attach it to the hook. There we go. Okay. Just trying to make it harder than what it was. Get this in the middle here. There we go. Okay. Sure. Okay. Just get them to line up right to the holes, and then you just push them in on either side. <sighs> okay, now we are getting this, and we are putting it in holes right. So we got the steps on. This first 
part's just a little difficult because it's I really don't have nothing to hang on to. in and it works better if you use a uh, some pliers kind of push them in try to get them in a little bit more before you start pushing them but uh, a little tight but and there you go so there's some single seats so There's two sets of doubles, so I'll probably work on one and then we'll film the other. It's just with some of these angles, it's hard to get some of these to fit in, and it definitely wears on your fingers after a while. There we go. Okay. So getting these in. like before just gotta, gotta get them started and then just kind of push them in okay there we go there's another double seat okay so now oh now the fun part Put them in. Hmm. It'd be easier. Yeah, I gotta start with the. Yep. Just gotta line the pegs with the holes and just kind of push them in a little to get started. Sure, they all line up, and then just push down until they won't push down no more. All right.
trying to slide this in to get it all the way through. Make sure it's locked in. Yep, yeah, okay. loose but it's just open and closing all right so now now we're gonna get the big piece in because it may not matter which way but we'll just stick with the, the way the picture shows so here's the side piece both sides look exactly the same these are gone Okay, so I've got that one in. Flipping this around. Okay. So this is gonna Definitely getting there. I think just the the roof and maybe the tracks, and I think we'll be done. So almost there. Okay, kind of did the next step already, but I can show you kind of what I did. So this is the roof, and all I did was just push in these supports into the holes, like so, and then on the side here, just pushed in these little other or supports right here. Put a toothpick in either side to get it to hold and then once it's in once you close it you just kind of push it off the little side and all the tabs line up where they're supposed to go and that's pretty much it so i believe that is the rail the passenger car okay got the next pieces out for the track so again as the last like 12 steps it seems like it's two parts to this so this is the first one I built so this is going to be the end piece of the track and then this is going to be the other end piece so we'll go ahead and put this one together and we're going to have some interference because somebody wants some petting little wooden rail spike here and you go baby I'm trying to busy here I know okay and I get okay now for the end piece piece so it's gonna be you're gonna have one piece here one piece here and then we'll next step is the build the track in the middle so all right everybody <clears throat> okay I, I kind of cheated 
So I went ahead and built a track. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. So I went ahead and built the track. Uh, it wasn't any different than than the previous two that we put together. Just put the other tracks underneath, put the spike in, and put the little connector uh, in between once you lined up your end pieces. So this is pretty much the whole track. Um, you don't use this to run a train on. This is just more for it to sit on and for the display because there's just not enough here for it to to run on when you have it going. Or uh, if you do, it would just be with just the engine itself and that's it. But still, it, it's still not enough room or whatever. So this is more for just display. But but with that, the we're done with the model. So um, just to get move this out of the way, just want to show you how this works. So first, I'll run it with this and then it's no different when you hook the car to it uh it just may you know with all the extra weight it may just run a little slower but it, it works so with all the gears and with what you see here right there there's a, you see the d if you move it whoops, over there's neutral so here you can see the key goes either direction it don't really matter and if you wanted to go reverse, then this little uh, thing locks in where you can't really turn your key that way. So it turns one way, and then once you release it, it'll go backwards. And then you put it in drive, then it locks in right here to where I can't go this way, but I can turn it this way. So this is how you turn it and of course first you got to make sure this lever is down to lock <laughs> everything so it doesn't start going on you like it just did so you just turn it and you can just keep turning it until it either gets really tight or until you just kind of see the rubber bands twisting a little bit and then once you have it there, then with the lever right here, you just push up on it. You just hold it, push up on it, and then you just let it go. Oh, bring it back. <laughs> so, so it's actually working. So I'll just kind of hold it right here to, you can see all the vigors moving. So, so that's it. So. It's actually one of the first wood models I've put together where I hadn't had to work on the mechanical part to get it to go or whatever, but but that's it. And then if you want it to go backwards, then you just um, you just flip this over to reverse and then wind it the other way. And then when you put it down, then it'll just go, it'll wind it backwards. It'll spin everything the other way. So you just gotta make sure that's down. And you just gotta lock this in place when you start winding. And then, um, some other features is <clears throat> you have this little door here that that opens up that you can see all the rubber bands inside and then uh, you got a little stair a little stair thing to step on it's right there I'm trying to think okay so um yeah okay so with the passenger car <clears throat> So, uh, just looking inside, you see all the all the seats and everything is right there. And then when you just close it, you're just pushing it forward. It locks in. And you got the doors that open up on the end on both sides. And then underneath, you got the wheels that, like an actual train car, they just move a little bit, just depending on where it's going. Everything. Um, so, then you got the railing on both sides, the doors open, railing on both sides, then you got the little coupling that hooks to the car, just kind of push it together and it'll, it'll lock, it'll lock together, like so, like it, there we go, so locks together, so it'll move. And then uh, with the rail, 
you can just set it on the on the rail like that. Get it on here. Like that. And so <clears throat> so that's how it would look. Now sitting on the rail. So that's how much of the rail actually uh, covers the train and the car. So as I was saying, you, you could run the engine on the train on the track, but it's not going to stay on it that long. So once you wind the key a lot, it's, it'll run a good distance on a on a floor or anything. So, but but it actually uh, it was a pretty fun model to put together. And um, you know this was. You know the first one I put together by the company Wood Trick, and uh, I mean a lot of things were similar with all the other companies that do wooden models. Uh, I didn't really notice too many differences. You know, just in the uh, the directions, the manual. <clears throat> um, some of the pieces were a little easier to pull, you know, to to separate uh, when you're punching them out and everything. But uh, and and the pieces fitting together. I noticed they were a little, a uh, little easier. So, but other than that, though, I mean, it's, it's pretty much the same. But, uh, but there you go. That's, uh, that's the uh, locomotive wooden model locomotive from Wittrick. So, so I hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate you watching. As always, uh, please like, share, or leave comments. Uh, happy to get back with you. So, I appreciate you watching. See you next episode.